is our standby radio. We can use it to pick up clearance without turning the airplane on. Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport information at you. When it's when this is set to on, it overrides uh, what is in the uh, CDU. So if we switch this, it's going to switch down on the CDU as well. In order to keep that from happening, you got to put it on standby. And now you control the radios from down here, your COM1, your standby, your NAV1, and then uh, your squawk code is going to go here. In order to ident, the switch is actually, the button is actually on your yoke. So you press this button. Also over on the primary flight display for the uh, captain or the first officer, you'll have your ATC uh, one or two and then your code. And that's controlled over here on the captain's side. There's a switch here. Put that in standby. You'll see now that your transponder is in standby. And that's shown in two different locations. So we can switch this to two. And our second transponder will send out the same code, 4317. Okay, COM2 is on the right side. And if you want to switch frequencies, you can just hit the flip-flop, essentially, the right second LSK, line select key, or you can enter a frequency and you can, in the scratch pad, and you can place it either directly in to the COM2, and that'll take whatever it is in COM2 and drop it down into the standby, which is nice, because if you fat finger it, um, you haven't lost that frequency, you can go right back by recalling it. But it will throw out whatever was in the standby. That will get thrown out if you directly enter a frequency into your COM1 or COM2. Over here we have the electrical panel. See our left and right gens and a selector switch. Right now we're on external power. So we'll check the quality of the external power. We can see it's at 27.9 and the battery is showing 27.5. It was just showing 27.4 so it is charging. Here's the switch for the battery, master battery, off all the way down. Middle is on, fully up is your standby battery, which is your emergency battery. Should you lose power in the airplane, you'll want to bring uh, it into standby after you've exhausted the main battery to give you an additional 30 minutes. Of course, your main goal should be landing as soon as possible because this is a fairly electrical intensive airplane. Another cool thing about tuning the radios, this is the tune button right here. So if we're in another window, we can bring that up. Normally the first officer will have this display. This is not a full FMS on the right side in this particular setup. The FMS is only contained in the left. Uh, it can only be accessed through the CDU on the left side. Right side is just radios. See if I press any of these buttons to access the flight plan, it'll tell me FMS not available. Okay, um, so essentially it's a very expensive comm panel. If one of the cool features that no one seems to have known except me is if I press on the COM1, I get a COM1 control uh, and a COM2 control. Oops, let me turn that squelch back on. So if I press this button, I can turn squelch on and off here. 
and I have the ability to put in four standby frequencies which I can then access just by pressing one of the left line select keys here which is really nice when you're going into some place you want to have your approach you want to have tower you want to have ground and maybe you want to have the uh, FBO um, frequency as well that way you're not scrambling to find it and plug it into the um, CDU so that's pretty cool um, to control where you transmit you've got a selector knob here you've got three locations uh, COM1, COM2 and PA and this is your volume for your intercom you go down to the PFD display it will when you transmit let's get on a frequency I'm not going to screw anything up here in Sky Harbor Stick that in number two. We'll go to number two. When we transmit, you can see the COM2 gets illuminated with a blue background. So that lets you know that's kind of your TX button, lets you know what you're transmitting. 